Hello, and welcome to another episode of Dax in 10. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the sum and the sum x functions. I'm going to take a look at what the differences are between them, how they operate, and when and where it's appropriate to use each of them. Okay, so let's start with the sum function, the simpler of the two functions. Uh, the sum function takes a single argument, which is the uh, which is a single column of data from a specified table. Um, it will take all of that data in the single column, it will aggregate it together and it will return out a sum total value. Um, it does this using the current filter context, so it's important to note that the filter context is applied first and then the sum does its work over the column aggregating uh, the filtered values to return out that, that uh, single sum total. Okay, so if we now go into Power BI and demonstrate the use of the sum function, I'm going to create a new measure on the sales table called sum of sales amount. Create new measure. Sum sales amount. We use the sum function and we pass into that the sales amount column from the sales table. I just select that from the options there and tab. That brings back the, the column we're looking for. OK on that. So we now have a new measure in our sales table called sum of sales amount. We'll drag that onto the desktop. Uh, just make that a little bit resize that. And we can see there the sum of sales amount for the whole of the sales table is 8.34 billion. Now you bear in mind at this point there is nothing in the filter context, we've got no filters applied. Uh, so it's bringing back all the amounts of the sales amount column for the whole of the table. If I click on one of these, on this slicer here, for North America example, it will then apply that into the filter context and it's now only summing the rows that are applicable bring back a reduced amount there 4.93 billion again if I click on Europe get a different amount Asia and a different amount again and each time it's applying the filter context before it actually sums does the aggregation of those uh, values in the sales amount column to bring back the sales amount to summer sales amount total okay so if I now create a new uh, column here so what I can't do with the sum function is um, combine two columns to get a value uh, and pass that in as an argument. I have to actually create a new column first. So we create a new column here and we call that total profit. And in this case, I'm going to take the sales amount column and from that I'm going to take uh, the cost, so the total cost. That now gives me a new column called total profit and I can then sum that now. Right, let's create a new measure. I'll call that sum total profit equals sum and we take the total profit the new column we've just created called total profit in the sales table and we can drag that onto the top desktop now and we can see there so let's take that off without the filter context uh, without there being a filter context we can see that out of our sum of sales amount of 8.34 billion, um, the total profit was 4.79 billion. Um, in a minute, we'll look at the sum x function and how we can do the same thing without creating uh, an additional column. Okay, so we now look at the sum x function. 
This time it has two arguments. Uh, uh, so the sum x function is what's known as an iterator function. Uh, and basically you pass in uh, either a table or an expression that returns a table as the first argument. It will then go iterate through that table one row at a time and apply the expression that you pass in as the second argument to the sum x function. So then sum x will iterate through the table uh, using, so again it uses the current filter context. Uh, it will go through the, the, the filtered data uh, row by row and take the expression and then add all of those up until it comes out with a total of all the row, row by row calculations to give you the overall total. Okay, so let's uh, switch over to Power BI again to show this in action. Okay, so in the last demo we saw that if we wanted to get the sum of total profit using the sum function, uh, we first had to create an additional column that took total cost away from sales amount for each row. Um, we can reproduce the same uh, total using the sum x function and we don't need to create that additional column. Instead we can pass in the expression as the second argument to the sum x function and it will go through row by row and calculate uh, the total profit and then at the end of it we'll sum those together uh, and we'll aggregate those together to get the sum of total profit. So let's try that now. Uh, let's create an additional uh, a new measure there on the sales table. And we'll call that sum total profit uh, x. And we get the sum x function here. Now for the first argument we're passing in the sales table. And then for the second argument is our expression. So this is the sales amount in the sales table. taken away from that the total cost so it's the exactly the same expression that we passed in for to create our additional column in the sum uh, demo and there we have it our new measure we drag that onto the desktop there and we can see that we get the same value 4.79 billion again it's uh, in this instance it's calculating it before any filters are applied so uh, let's, let's apply the filters there by clicking on North America and we see we get the same values for both so when and where to use well as is often the case uh, it depends um, it depends on your personal preference and, and it certainly will depend on the structure of your data. Um, for example, if you need to add up uh, the sum of some combined columns, uh, either in the, in the same table or maybe in a related table, and you don't want to add an additional calculated column uh, to the table, then you do need to use the sum x. Um, it will then iterate over the rows in a table and you can then pass those uh, combined columns in uh, as an expression. Uh, however, if you if you want if you don't mind using a uh, calculated column to combine uh, columns, then you just need to use the sum function. Uh, or if you've got a, a, just a single column of data uh, that you want want to add up, then then an aggregator function is fine. Um, however, you could use the sum x in those cases, and it will give you the same answer. Uh, if you're dealing with averages, you will often need to use sum x. Uh, you, you can't you can't perform multiplication on averages uh, at the grand total level. Uh, you need to iterate through and do your calculations. So again, you'd need to use the sum x in that uh, instance. Okay, both the sum function and the sum x function can, uh, but not always, give you the same result. Uh, but they go about achieving that result in very different ways. Uh, the sum function is what's known as an aggregator function and uh, basically what that does is it will go through the values in the specified column um, for those rows that uh, match the current filter context and it will add them all together to give you your final result. Uh, the sum x function on the other hand is what's known as an iterator function and it works its way through the table that you pass in as your first uh, argument uh, and it will evaluate, it will go through that table row by row and it will evaluate the expression that you pass in as the second argument uh, for all those rows uh, 
that match the current filter context. It will get results for each of those those row, rows. It will then, at the end of it, add all those results together to give you your final total. Uh, we've mentioned several times now the filter context. Uh, what the filter context means uh, is the current filters that are influencing the data model for a particular evaluation. And it's important in DAX because you can pass in the exact same formula and get a completely different result depending on what the filter context is in use at the time. Uh, the filter context can come from visuals in your workbook, so clicking on charts on Power Pivot or, or uh, Power BI. Uh, this is called the initial filter context. Uh, it can also come through the use of the calculate function. Now we'll be looking at the calculate function in the next episode, um, but basically the calculate function can be used to change the initial filter context by adding, uh, or removing or modifying the initial filter context. And as I say, we'll, we'll look at that in more detail in the next episode. Uh, the filter context can also come from the, the implicit use of the calculate function. So every measure that you use has a hidden calculate function wrapped around it. Uh, and in certain circumstances, uh, this, this hidden calculate function can give you very different results than, than you might expect. So this is why the filter context is a very important concept to understand with DAX, uh, because you can you can get some very odd results that you're not expecting, and that's uh, that's due to how filters are being applied through the filter context. Uh, you also need to think about performance implications. Um, you might think that some X as an iterator is uh, is particularly inefficient. Uh, it's not always true. Um, DAX has been optimized to handle uh, functions such as some X. Um, but it can also cause performance problems. Um, if we look at Power BI, it's got two calculation engines, the storage engine and the formula engine. Uh, the storage engine is the faster of the two, um, and you should attempt to write your formulas in such a way that it makes use of the storage engine where possible. Uh, certainly using the sum function will always use the storage engine for its calculations, so use that where you can. Um, and for most simple calculations using the sum x function, uh, that will also use the storage engine. However, there are sometimes when you use the sum x where it will it will revert to the formula engine to do some or all of its work, and that's particularly uh, true if you have complex comparison statements in there. So, for example, if you're using sum x with the if statement, it will then use the formula engine, and can can give you particularly poor performance. Okay, so that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed learning DAX with DAX in 10. If you did, then please give me a big thumbs up uh, and please feel free to leave a comment. If you uh, want to find out when the next episode of DAX in 10 is available or if you want to support the channel, then please consider subscribing. Until the next time, thanks for watching.